Hey guys, what's up? I'm Joseph from Umbuki Baseball Blocks, guys, and it is back. We are back with another video today with our team number 27 in our countdown, the Pittsburgh Pirates. So let's get down to business. All right, so the Pirates, let's talk about what's going to be happening. I think what's going to happen with the Pirates this year. I think the Pirates are going to lose another 100-game season. Uh, I apologize to all you Pirates fans, but I just don't think that Pirates have the key still to still improve. Um, they got a couple of good players. They lost a lot of big key players in their uh, lineup from last year in their pitching rotation, but they really improved by signing a couple of good players. So that's just my prediction for the outcome. Um, Right there, it says it yourself. Their 2020 record, they lost 105 last season, only winning 57. Their payroll was 39,068,399. And their fi their division finish this year is going to be in fifth place. I, like I said, I don't think they have the keys, but with their young talent, they're going to be like the improving Diamondbacks. I think that they just got, they signed a lot of big key players to improve their lineup and their pitching rotation by a small step. But the Diamondbacks have improved a lot better just to get off track with the Pirates. So um, I think the most improved team out of the out of uh, the NL is going to have to be the Diamondbacks. I just think maybe next year the Pittsburgh Pirates can do something. So let's talk about the Pirates right now. Um, let's talk about their pitching rotation. Let's start off with the quick bang. At number one, I have James McDonald. Um, I, he just rose some eyebrows last season near the end. Um, I really did not. I don't really like the Pirates. Not a huge Pittsburgh fan. Um, I just really like it because of their jerseys. looks pretty nice colors. Um, but I, I actually follow some of the players they have on their teams, but I just don't like the team. I don't follow them. But when it comes on MLB tonight, I just check them out saying, wow, um, that's a pretty hot what they did that one day. But I usually see him coming up as a losing team. But James McDonald, I think he's going to be a decent pitcher. Um, he had a split season last year. This is his first full season with the Pirates. Um, last year he was 4-6 and six with a 4.02 ERA. What oh, 71 innings pitched, and I think that he's gonna with his first full season and him being most likely hoping to be named the opening day starter, which is going to be highly unlikely because I think that another pitcher in the rotation is going to outtake him. But I really just really want James McDonald to be their number one pitching, one or their number one opening day starter pitcher in the rotation. So I think he has all the keys uh, to be the opening day starter for the Pirates. Uh, my number two pitcher, I think uh, what. The Pirates are going to announce that he's going to be the starter for opening day is Ross Ohlendorf. Um, he was just pretty much awful for the squad last season. Um, he, he only won one game last season. He was 1-11 with a 4.07 ERA with 108 innings pitch. I mean, he was just pretty much awful. The Pirates last season was without their ace of the squad, of the most likely half of the season without their ace, Zach Duke, who was, was traded to the Arizona Diamondbacks in the offseason. I think that it's going to the the Pirates are going to be lost without Zach Duke in the rotation. I mean, they acquired some another young gun about to get to the two young guns who came over from a different squad. So um, I think Ross Ollendorf he's going to be most likely to be announced as the opening day starter. But I really want to see uh, James McDonald as their opening day starter. At number three we have Kevin Correa, one of the young guns who have been acquired or uh, or was traded over here. Well, he was a free agent at the end, so the Pirates signed him to a deal um, from the San Diego Padres last year. He was a he had a ten uh, five hundred record. He was ten and ten uh, with an ERA of a high ERA of five point four zero and uh, one hundred forty five innings pitched. I think he's going to take this this team to a new a new height. I mean, I can see him being kept there in Pirates for about a couple years now. He's a young ace that you that the Pirates have to have in the rotation. I mean, if he does not, he's not in your rotation. I don't know what's going to be going on. But he's going to be a, a key piece in their pitching rotation. I mean, enough said about Kevin Correa. Um, he, he was the main piece in the Padres' uh, run to the playoffs. After the Padres had Matt Latos, I mean, the Padres are going to have a, a slump year this year because they don't have no more Adrian Gonzalez. So that's going to be a key point in the Padres. Um, so I think Kevin Correa, with the signing with the Pirates, is going to be a decent pitcher this year. Um, just keep a, keep a good eye, eye on him. I think he's going to be a really stunner pitcher. Um, at our number four, we have Paul Mahalem. Uh, this guy has been turned from a number two starter down to a number four starter. Um, he is now, I'm pretty much going to call him the ace of the squad. I didn't want to name Ross Ollendorf the ace or James McDonald or Kevin Correa the ace. I think Paul Mahalem is going to be the main ace of this squad because he's going to be carrying the team because he's the only pretty much the only big name in their pitching rotation 
because no more Zach Duke, who has been with the team for, I don't know how many years. Now he's out of Pittsburgh. I think that him being out of Pittsburgh is going to have a huge offense on the Pirates this year. So I just have the Pirates slumping because of the Zach Duke loss. But Paul Mahalam last year, uh, he was 9-15 and with an ERA of a 5-10. It was pretty high. Uh, he appeared in 32 games. He pitched an uh, oh, no, okay amount of innings at 185. Um, decent pitcher, I actually have to say. Um, I have some scouting notes on him. I don't think you guys would care, but I have a couple of scouting notes on him. Um, he's an over-the-top arm. He's a single guy. He's an arm single. He's over-the-top arm angle. He's really decent. Um, he hides the ball effectively with his front side. I mean, but by the by the picture you look at right now, I just think that he's he, what what I'm understanding here is is that he's going to be a future uh, opening day starter. I don't know why he's not the opening day starter right now, but I still think that James McDonald should still be named opening day starter. But I have to say that he's going to be the he's the he is the future of the Pittsburgh Pirates. And to, and to round out the pitching rotation, I have the number five acquirement of the Pir of the Pirates has to be Scott Olson. Um, I, I can't really say much about Scott Olson. I know he spent time down in the minors with the Nationals last season, spent two years there. Um, he was 4-8 and eight last season with the Nationals with the 5.56 ERA with 81 innings pitch. I, like I said, I don't know really much about him. I heard him about when he was in Florida, but I didn't really follow him in Florida. I didn't really follow him in the Nationals. I don't even know he got traded to the Nationals until now. I'm like, wow, how, I don't know how, what to expect from him. I know he's having an okay outing in his last outing with the Pirate with the Pirates. I don't know who they faced, but I just watched it on MLB tonight saying he had a decent outing. But I think that he's gonna be rounding up the in the fifth spot. So let's go to their key arrivals this season. I think that the number one and number two key arrivals. I think there's only two key arrivals, but what's gonna hurt the team is what the, who they lost. So let's talk about the first arrival, and that's going to be Lyle Overbay from the Toronto Blue Jays. I think he's going he's going to bring some great hitting to this team. Uh, I have him at a decent last year for Toronto. He had 534 at-bats, 20 home runs and 67 RBIs. Um, he's going to he's going to bring some power to that lineup to Pittsburgh and he's just going to be a decent really good first baseman. Um, enough said. It's pretty much what I have really just have Lyle over be uh, doing this season. Um, then our next number two pickup has to be Matt Diaz. I mean, he had a playoff run with the Braves last season. I didn't really see him play in the playoffs, but he was, he's a he's gonna be a backup this year in left field for uh, Jose Debata. He's gonna be the backup. He is uh, in the depth chart for the Pirates right now. He's in third, and he's the backup for right field. So he's pretty much gonna play left and right, and he's gonna be backing up Garrett Jones and Debata. While Garrett Jones going from first all the way back to right field, so that's where they just really needed the help. So that's pretty much where it's going to be for Matt Diaz. He's most likely going to be playing left field. I see him a lot playing left field. So well, maybe he can be another breakout star for the Pirates in this year. Okay, guys, now it's down to the departures. This is I don't really have any pictures for the departures right now, but let's talk about their departures. Some big key of departures this season for the Pirates. I mean, they lost Zach Duke in a trade to the Diamondbacks. Donna Evelyn, I don't know really a lot much about him, but he went to go sign with the Dodgers. I mean, Lasting's Millage is now was one of their key parts in their outfield. And then you lost you lost Chan Ho Park to go play in China. I mean, Chan Ho Park was came over from the D Yankees. I think it was in a trade. Uh, he went to go in and sign with Japan. Zach Duke, the key ace of this whole line, this whole pitching rotation, is gone. And he just had to get out of Pittsburgh. I mean, he wants to go to a team um, who was a contender, and that's not where he went, but the Diamondbacks paid him a nice offer, too. I think in the next few years, and if the Diamondbacks can do okay, I cannot see him being a contender, but they can be. They can improve their record. Maybe they can be in third place and probably skip the playoffs in a few years, but I, I can still see them improving this season. I think they can be a breakout team in years to come, but... Zach Duke, who had broken his uh, two bones in his in his pitching hand, is going to be out. Yeah, I think six to eight weeks with that. Um, I just I bet the people in Pittsburgh wish him the best with the Arizona Diamondbacks. Um, so guys, it's now time for the rookies, the top three breakouts. I have to say this season. Um, so let's get started with our number one 
uh, prospect. His name is Rudy Owens. He's a left-handed pitcher. Uh, Owens has been with the Pirates. He was a minor league pitcher of the year for the Pirates in each of the last two seasons, and his stuff has taken a step forward as well. So he's a legitimate major league rotation candidate. He'll probably open the season in AAA and wait for an opportunity. So just say like Ollendorf goes down, put him in. Uh, Scott Olson goes down, put him in. Kevin Cray, you can just like say if one of these guys go down, you can just put him in. Um, he's a really delicate pitcher. I saw some film on him, not a whole lot, but I think he's going to be a delicate pitcher to have. He's been pitcher of the year for the past two seasons for the Pirates, and he's going to be a pretty distant pitcher. Uh, our number two, Brian Morris. Rudy Owens was number one. Brian Morris, number two. Uh, he's a right-handed pitcher as well. Oh, well, he's a right-handed pitcher, and Rudy was a left-handed pitcher. Uh, Morris was in three. It was in a three-team deal that sent Jason Bay to the Red Sox and Manny to the Dodgers in 2008. And he's the only one of the four players the Pirates could, got who could be a, a contributor. Uh, he's his, he has a front-line stuff that will probably be. Oh, he'll probably open up the season in AAA. I got a loss of words right there. I apologize. Um, he'll be all, pretty much opening the season in AAA. Um, he's going to be in the pitching rotation, maybe a number three starter, maybe number two. Uh, don't really know much about him, but he, by me watching the film on MILB.com, MinorLeagueBaseball.com, um, he's going to—he's pretty much delicate. He's a really nice pitcher. I think he's going to be—he's going to be one of the top prospects to come out of the mi minors and probably have a breakthrough and probably have be. Uh, minor league player of the year or maybe a major league player or minor not the major league player of the year another loss of words right there but he could be rookie of the year is what I was looking for but that's going to be in the future so let's talk about the, maybe the guy who can be in the future right here so the number three guy I have to talk about his name is Andrew Lambeau um, the, Lambeau was the Dodgers top prospect a couple years ago but he was suspended 50 games last year for positive uh, for a drug test and then he was traded to the Pirates in July. The Pirates believe he has matured and believe in this in his bat. So he, he will also be in AAA. I think all these guys will be playing in AAA and could be seeking a, a chance in the majors, I think, at near the end of the season. But I just really think that the Pirates are going to be slumping this season with all their key losses. They have a lot of key losses in this season. I mean, you lost Zach Duke and their pitch rotation. You don't have... Um, Lasting's Millage, but Andrew Lambeau can be filling the void for Lasting's Millage. He went on to go sign with the White Sox. Um, he plays outfield, so I can just see uh, him maybe taking, uh, getting a maybe a second. He can be a backup. So, um, sorry, God, I'm pretty much sick right now. I have a headache. So, if you guys, I came across some errors in this video. I apologize. So, guys, just to wrap up this video, we have my projected uh, hitting in this year's. Pirates, I just have just to say that the Pirates are not going to do good this year. Um, they're, they're an improved team. As you guys, if you guys seen the video, if you concentrated more on the video, I said that the Pirates are going to be an improved team this year. Um, with their new manager, manager, Clint Hurdle, who came over from the Texas Rangers as the hitting coach, I think that Clint Hurdle is going to be a great manager to come for the Pirates. I think he's going to be there for a few more years. Or maybe he could be, sent, he could be released if the, if the Pirates just don't show any uh, improvement. So with our batting order, we have leading off, we got Andrew McCutcheon in center. And number two, we got Jose Tabata in left. In second base, we got Neil Walker. Third base, or uh, right field, we have uh, Garrett Jones, who played first base. Uh, Pedro Alvarez at third base. Lyle Overbay at first. Ronnie Cedeno at shortstop. Chris Snyder, who was a, a, pick, a key pickup last year for the Pirates, but didn't really show it in his tenure with the Pirates. Um, he's gonna be wrapping up the rotate the hitting and the as you guys know the NL has a pitching slot so guys that is it the Pirates 30 and 30 tomorrow we have the Cleveland Indians um let's see what the Indians can do ne next year I think that just Masters Masterson is gonna be an improved pitcher Fossil Carmona I can probably see him going for a nice uh, ace of the year um, he's going to be a nice ace to look at this year. So, guys, the, there is your Pittsburgh Pirates. The Pirates are going to be finishing fifth this year in the division. Um, I'm going to be the player you really want to watch out for is going to have to be uh, James McDonald in their pitching rotation. I, you have to see what this guy can really bring to the plate. Um, but other than that, I'm Justin. I'll talk to you guys soon, and I hope you guys enjoy your spring and spring break. It's finally here, guys. I'll talk to you guys soon. Have a great night.